Adam, I want to talk about the Bears for a second. Uh, it does feel like things are really imploding in Chicago. What, from your perspective, is the state of the Chicago franchise right now? What gave you that idea, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a deep thinker, Adam. I don't know. Just, <laughs> but, yeah, just try to keep up, please. To like, we're all trying to be like Chewy, aren't we? That's, <laughs> that's, all we can, that's all we can do. You know, listen, the season... It, I was with a Bears fan last night. I had to do a diabetes ride at the Peloton Studios in New York City, and there was a Bears fan, and the, she came sobbing over to me. Please tell me it's going to be okay. Please tell me it's going to be okay. And if you've been a Bears fan, you felt that way for a long time. And this was the year where you felt like, okay, we've got the number one pick. We're going to land the quarterback that's going to turn it around. They started well, and then all of a sudden, it just crashed and burned. And I think that there were signs that this could be happening all along, but think about this too. They're four and two, and they are seconds away from going to five and two. And all of a sudden, Tyreek Stevenson's taunting the fans. He's late to the play. He runs back. He tips the ball. It goes to Noah Brown. They lose the game, and it's a situation where. From that moment on, it just feels like nothing has gone right. And it's only exacerbated all the issues that were within the organization at that point in time. They've kind of come to light. And now you have players wondering if Caleb should start. You have the team debating that. You have the team firing the offensive coordinator, going to Thomas Brown, who was in Carolina last year with Bryce Young, the Packers are waiting to see how the Bears are going to handle this in regards to their game. But there's a short-term concept and a long-term concept. Right? Short-term, like they're struggling and they're reeling and they're on the ropes. But long-term, like what are they going to do to get it turned around again? Like what are they doing? It, it, it just it never gets turned around, right? Very rarely. But could it be that they're just a coach away, a good coach away from getting it turned around? I mean, I've got someone on the talk and text line asking, could Bill Belichick go to the Chicago Bears and turn them into like a dynasty powerhouse like he did with the Patriots? Well, I, I don't see Bill wanting to do that. Um, I think Bill's going to want to go to a place that he can win quickly and where he feels like there's talent in place and you know, Bill, I think he's been pretty clear. Like, he's going to go to stable, functioning, successful organizations in a perfect world. Um, I don't know that it's going to be a perfect world. Like, he's got to get a job, and maybe Chicago will be the one. But I don't think Chicago is the one that he's looking at and saying, boy, I want to go coach the Chicago Bears. Adam, have you heard anything about how the Preston Smith deal went down? Because there's rumblings that he didn't ask for a trade that came after the fact. Have you heard anything to that, that he did actually ask for the trade and they honor that that request? Well, that's what he told reporters in Pittsburgh, right? So it, it, either he's telling the truth or not. So, I mean, he said that he asked for a trade, that this had been in the works for a while. Um, I had not heard that it was different than that. Uh, I find that a little surprising, but, um, you know, I don't know Preston Smith personally to know whether he would make up something like that or whether he's believable. You guys would know it better than anyone. What are your thoughts there? I mean, well, he was pretty quiet here, Adam. He not like he was meeting with the media all the time. He he was pretty quiet. And kind well, of kept his to argument himself. his argument was that he's not a four three end. He's a three four outside guy. But if that's the right. guy, you knew that before the season even started. Like, why wouldn't you come up with it then if you knew you weren't going to fit that system? Because I think still good players are good players and he's been a good player and eventually good players find a way to contribute. It doesn't always happen right away. Like, you know, again, I, I just think in a fantasy perspective, right? Calvin Ridley, they pay him a lot of money. He goes in, doesn't get a lot of passes. Then eventually they come back to him. Like talent usually rises, not always, but mm -hmm. usually at some point. And Preston Smith is a good player. You know, you'd want a guy like that around if you could keep him. It just didn't work. Uh, the last time the Packers played was against the Lions. Their offense, obviously, a big reason with their success. When when we get to that point in the season, a couple of months from now, is Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator, going to be the top name out there, Adam? I, to me, I think when we look at it right, I think there are a few names that stand out. I think we got Bill Belichick, Ben Johnson, Mike Vrabel, Aaron Glenn. There's Brian Flores going to get back in. 
Uh, there are some names, some obvious names you look at, and I think we're going to get the usual seven to nine openings as usual. We already have two. I could easily give you five more that you're going to see, maybe six or seven. Um, Bill, I think, will want to get back in. Vrabel, I think, is going to definitely get a job. And Ben Johnson is going to be selective in where he goes. Um, I don't think he's just jumping to take a chance. Like, I don't expect Ben Johnson to wind up in Chicago. I don't. We'll see how that works out. Um, Brian Flores is on my podcast yesterday. He's interested in becoming head coach again. Aaron Glenn, you know, just like Ben Johnson's getting a lot of attention, Aaron Glenn should be getting attention too on the defense side of the football. And I just think what a perfect match that would be in New Orleans where he was a finalist for that job in the past, where they loved him as a player, where he's garnered a lot of respect. Um, so I could see Aaron Glenn getting that job in time. Uh, depending on how their process works out. So th there are some guys you look at right away. You say, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Adam Schefter hanging out with Jen Gabe and Chewy as he does each and every Wednesday here on 94.5 ESPN Milwaukee. All right, so we are seeing numbers, and they all start shaking out at this point. We're at the halfway point of the season. And the Packers right now, according to NFL.com, have a 72% chance to make the playoffs. And you got the Cardinals in there, who I think have surprised a lot of people, Adam. What do you attribute their turnaround to? Because I see them on this list. Uh, obviously, they could w likely win their division. Uh, why are they playing so much better now than they were early on? Well, I, I think Jonathan Gannon has helped turn around that defense. And Drew Petsky, uh, who may be another head coaching candidate, has helped turn around the offense. And everyone talks about what Cliff Kingsbury has done this year, but Drew Petsing has elevated Kyler Murray to a place that even Cliff Kingsbury didn't get him to. So that, I think, is key. And that division's been a little soft, frankly. Uh, San Francisco has been disappointing. Seattle's been disappointing. The Rams have been disappointing. And Arizona's just kind of done its job and done what it's supposed to do and played better football. And as long as you can do that, then you're going to be in the thick of things, which is exactly what's going on with the Cardinals right now. But they are playing Good football. I mean, they have some people that you want on your football team 100 days out of 100 days. Buda Baker, James Conner, some guys that are just like ballers and leaders, right? Well, what's going around in there? Like Chewy Sick, James? <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, I think he's kicking it over to me is what's happening. Uh, is that I, what's at going least, on? I at least try to cover it in my – I, I turn off breather. the microphone. I cover it in my thing. He's over there just hacking up a lung. Not only is Chewy the intellectual thinker, but he's also the germ spreader. <laughs> I'm a super spreader. They want me to go home. Adam, <laughs> Adam, if yeah. Kansas City beats the Bills this weekend, yes. is, the, is the talk of an undefeated season going to ramp up? Because these are their games after. Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Browns, Texans, Steelers. I mean, are they going to start? That Panthers, up. Raiders, Chargers, Steelers. You repeat that. Oh, let's let's go. Panthers, like Pan Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Browns, Texans, Steelers. There's three games in there that are that are losable to me. Chargers, uh, uh, the Steelers, Steelers at 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 Pittsburgh, right? Uh, yeah, and there was one more that you had Texans, Houston, Texans? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, which is at home. Chargers and Texans are at home. I just think that's 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 what Andy Reid's going to use for motivation because you know we went to back to back Super Bowls we got complacent against your team the Broncos yep. Yep. and then you know team if that happens you just get a little bored but I think that Andy Reid's going to use this as motivation to say hey you could be very special only one other team has do is, has done it and I I'm leaning well, towards I think they could do it. I, I, I don't like again. I, I covered a Denver team that was thirteen and zero, and it was kind of taboo to bring that up for a while. Like, I, I don't think people like to bring it up. Could, sort of like a pitcher that has a perfect game going, you don't say anything, you just keep going along. And for Andy to bring that up now to me would seem a bit premature. Like, we're, we're ten games in, we're going into week eleven. Um, I, 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 that, I don't know. You, I mean, you played. But, but, for, but Adam, it's not his choice, though, isn't it? The media's choice to stoke that well, fire and really get it going. Yeah, the, the media is going to talk about it. Of course, I got that. That 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 makes sense. But I I don't see a coach saying, "Boy, if you beat Buffalo Sunday, we're now looking at a perfect season." Like I, 
coaches, you know, coaches, they're mm-hmm. weak to game to game. Don't get past this opponent. We're not thinking about anything other than the Buffalo Bills. Like that's how they think. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Like I can't see him dangling that right now. Like, is it out there? Of course. They're not idiots. They all hear it. And we can talk about it. That's our job. And we can assess as we look at it, like, yeah, if they win this game, now you start to look. Now it starts to get interesting. Wow. Like, could they do it? We could talk. But I just don't think that that's how the players and coaches are thinking right now. Adam, things have been disastrous for our former guy, Aaron Rodgers, in New York. Yes. Is he going to retire at the end of the year? What are their options? And how much does this affect his legacy with how poorly this has gone? Yeah, you know, I don't buy into the affecting his legacy. You're still talking about one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And, you know, the, the people remember the way that Joe Namath flamed out in Los Angeles at the end of his career. No, they don't remember that. Um, I, I don't think it tarnishes the idea that he is one of the greatest quarterbacks who's ever played. He's going to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's an all-time player, an all-time quarterback. Um, that doesn't change. But when when I watch the guy right now, he just looks like he's not having fun. He doesn't mm-hmm. look like he's himself. And, you know, if you're not enjoying yourself at 40, 41, and you, and you have enough money and, 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 uh, and even more brain power than Chewy does, then you can go do what you want. <laughs> Right, like he said, why, why, why do I need to play this and be a part of this team and this organization? Like, it, you know, everybody told him, you, you, know, you want to play for the Jets? The Jets, like the Jets, have had a history of not getting things. And he's like, I don't care. Like he thought that he could turn around. That he thought he was stronger than that. And I think the reality of being a Jet has set into him. And I think he understands now that it's bigger than him. And even he is not capable of turning around something that has been an issue for that organization for any number of years. Like he came in all wide eyed thinking I can do this. And as he's around it and he sees how the organization operates, he says, you know what? This is, I can't do this. And this is not fun. Adam, let's do that exercise. This is the last thing with you today that you just did. When Chewie was asking about the Chiefs, which, by the way, I did see on Get Up this morning, they did ask, could the Chiefs have an undefeated season? So yeah, there you go. It's already out there. It's already being asked, Chew. Um, Let's run through the uh, Packers' remaining schedule. So they've you know, got. I was opening up my, my, my schedule book before you even asked that because I had a feeling that's where you're going to go. So you'll allow me, Jen, here. At oh, Chicago, fantastic. You do all the work. At Chicago, um, they should win that game. They should win that game. There, mm-hmm. there's, no re- there's no reason they should not win that game. Home for San Francisco, they should win that game. Home for Miami Thanksgiving, should win that game. At Detroit, tough game, loss. At Seattle, should win that game. New Orleans, should win that game. At Minnesota, tough game, loss. Home for Chicago. Like, they they don't have more than two. They shouldn't have. They shouldn't have more than two losses on their schedule. Shouldn't. Now, again. Let's see what kind of team they are. If they're really good, maybe they'll have one or none. If they struggle and are inconsistent, maybe they'll have three or four. But when you look at it right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games left, right? Mm-hmm. There's no re- there's no reason for this team not to go six and two. Now, they haven't been consistent enough to think that maybe they can go six and two. Worst case, they should be five and three. But five and three is eminently doable six and two is realistic and let's see what this team does with with this opportunity it's right there in front of them yeah so that's an 11 win season or a 12 win season that should be a playoff team but Gabe if you lose twice to the Lions and you lose twice to the Vikings you are a de facto wild card team Mm -hmm. right like if you make the playoffs uh, yeah, I mean, if I, I would still expect them to make the playoffs even I mean they would be 10 and 7 even if they go 4 and 4 Ten and seven, probably. Stacked. But I'm saying, if you I, I, lose, I think, if you I, lose four of those games, four of the five games that Adam kind of has, because they're six and three right now. If yep. you lose f- four of those five losses, are to the Lions and the oh yeah, you're no, Viking. you're a wild card team. I mean, even At if ten you, and seven, no, yeah. it'd be like eleven wins. Ten and or seven, 12. ten or more wins, you're a wild card okay. team. Okay. I, I, mean, I think I think right now, like again, you never know how season's gonna go. Right, we're halfway through, 
But Detroit looks like the best team in football to me. Detroit looks like it's going to win the division to me. Now mm-hmm. we'll see. Maybe Green Bay can play well enough down the stretch. That's the challenge of the season to overtake the Lions and become the NFC North champions. But it looks like it looks like they'll be a wild card team to me right now. And if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. So you don't think that the Jared Goff five interceptions is something that will plague him the rest of the year, the second half of the season? Because that was bad. Like they got the win, right? That ball just squeaked through the uprights, but that was a bad performance by the QB. One bad performance everybody has in the course of a season. I, I guarantee when Chewy played with Favre, there were games oh, like yeah. that, right? Right? Yeah, there were more than one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Headline, Chewy ripped, ripped, ripped. Yeah. Chewy, Shocking. Brett Favre, like, you know, yeah. Chewy says Brett Favre sucked for a long time. <laughs> Adam, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Brett this just morning. doesn't appreciate how deep of a thinker That's you are. That's exactly right. Like, he's on a whole nother level. <laughs>